This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If any of you guys are interested in starting a website, make sure you guys head over to squarespace.com forward slash watch the image in for 10% off your first purchase. Link will be down in the description. Today, we're gonna to be talking sliders and more specifically using sliders for music video production. The pros, the cons, and I kinda of wanna talk about are sliders dead because nobody's really using them anymore. Let's get into it. So let's rewind really quick. I wanna give you guys a brief history lesson on music video production back in the day. So back in the day, high budget music video production, it was really only a handful of stabilizers that were used. You use some sort of slider slash dolly system, you use the tripod, you use the shoulder rig, you use the crane, or you use the steady cam. And that was pretty much it. Fast forward to today, gimbals are the craze. And one of the main reasons being gimbals are cheap, gimbals are accessible, gimbals are getting smaller. Everybody can get their hands on a gimbal, so it's just like gimbals are the thing right now. And people are kind of venturing away from using sliders and dollies in music videos, but are they dead though? So over the past two months, me shooting my music videos, I don't think I've used the gimbal one time. And this isn't me trying to like be like, oh, I wanna distance myself from the trends. Well, kinda, I don't know. I, everybody uses a gimbal now. So me, I'm looking for the next thing. I'm looking for, I'm looking for something to look different. Everybody's using the gimbal, like I said. I kinda want a different look for my music video. So over the past two months, I haven't used one. Over the past two months, I've been shooting my videos handheld or I've been using my Serp Magic Carpet Pro slider. So this video is gonna kind of be a review on this, a mini review, but I just wanna talk about sliders as a whole anyways. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the slider that I'm using, the Serp Magic Carpet Pro. This slider is freaking amazing and I love it on so many levels. So before the Serp Magic Carpet Pro slider, I used to use a motorized slider and it was cool, it did some good things, but it just wasn't for me. The wires on the slider, the setup time just wasn't ideal for the music video production that I was using it for. It was great for like my YouTube content when I was reviewing a product and I wanted to get a really smooth shot. It was awesome, but for music video production, it just, I don't know, it just took all day. It just wasn't for me. I just wasn't really rocking with it like that. So I just ditched it. Now with the Serap Magic Carpet Pro slider, I'm gonna skip a lot of the technical aspects of the slider. Make sure you guys check the link out down in the description if you guys are interested in it. That'll tell you all the technical stuff like the payload and all the other stuff. I'm just gonna talk about what I liked about it, what I don't like about it. And uh, after that, we'll talk about my experience using it for my music video production. All right, so the first thing that I love about this slider is this expandable. Now for me, when I used to use the motorized slider, that just was what it was. It was short uh, and short's not bad, but sometimes you do need a longer slider for certain shots that you're trying to get. And this thing is expandable. It's literally you undo two latches on a slider, you put in the extension piece for the slider, and then you put the other piece on the end of that and you're good to go. So expandable slider, yes. Second thing I love about this slider is the flywheel system. The flywheel system makes the movement on this so smooth, man. It's no abrupt stops in the footage. Pretty much everything that you're getting on a slider is smooth, it's pinpoint accurate, it's easy to control. So, so smooth. The third thing that I love about this slider is the quick release system. Now to go back to the motorized slider, something that I hated about it that I just mentioned was the breakdown and the setup time. For me, this means a really quick breakdown. When I used the motorized slider, I had to take out all the wires from the slider, then delicately put them into the carrying case and then throw the slider. It, was just, it just took too long. So for this, all I have to do is slide this quick release system, take off the camera and the ball head, and I'm out, I'm good to go. I can throw the slider in my car, I can throw it into the carrying case that it comes with, and I'm gone. So for me, the quick release system is huge. It's just, it's so fast and it's just so fast paced and it, it, it moves with me when I'm trying to move fast paced. And the last thing that I love about this is the weight capacity. This slider can pretty much handle any cinema system out there. So for me, that means it's future proof. So whenever I decide to explore the realm of cinema cameras, I'll be good to go. I can use this on my a7 III, I can use this on a Rebel T2i, but I can also fully kit up a RED and put it on there and use that as well. So future-proof, awesome. Not to mention that Serap also has motorized options for these sliders as well. So if I wanna get back into using a motorized system for my product cinematography, I can do that as well. So I mean, that right there is a huge benefit also. Now let's get into the stuff that I don't like about this slider. One is the weight. This thing is kinda heavy and 
I mean, it makes sense. If you have a slider that's gonna be able to support cinema setups, it should be a little bit heavy, you know what I mean? So it's heavy, but it's solid. You know, it, it's like one of those things where it's like, if you wanna travel, it might be a little bit of a burden on you, but at the same time, it's sturdy. You know that it's not gonna break. You know that the rails aren't gonna bend. Nothing's gonna crack on it. It's just a solid, sturdy system, but it's heavy. So, I mean, gotta put it in the con space. The next thing that I don't like about this slider is the mounting system on it. Now you can technically put this slider on one set of tripod legs, but the mounting on the bottom of it is a little weird. It's like off centered. So sometimes when I put it on my tripod that I have now, I have like a bowl under my tripod. So if I put the slider on it and I slide the, the flywheel to one side of it, the side that's not mounted on it, it might like tilt on me. So the mounting is a little weird if you're trying to do a one tripod setup. But I mean, for me, the majority of the time when I'm doing music video production, I, you know, I plan ahead. So I'll bring two tripod legs. And then if I plan on extending the slider, I'll, I'm, I'll already know that I need to bring two tripods, you know? So, so for the people out there who value traveling lightweight and using one set of tripod legs, this might not be the system for you. So those cons right there are very small for me. Like I said, if I'm doing music video production, I'm already planning ahead. I'm already bringing tripod legs. I'm already countering in the fact that this thing's heavy and everything. So those cons are very, very, very small for me personally in the grand scheme of things. Now, before we get into my personal experience using this slider for music videos, I want to give a shout out to the sponsors of this episode, the people over at Squarespace. Now you guys know what Squarespace is. You hear me talking about them all the time, but just to refresh your memory, this is a really good place to be if you're trying to create a website, create an online store, create an online blog, or just overall better your own personal branding with a website. Squarespace has amazing designer templates. They also have really good customer support. So if you ever find yourself in a jam where you don't know what's going on with your website, you can just hit up Squarespace and they'll hit you right back. So if any of you guys are ready to take this leap onto a website, make sure you guys hit up Squarespace and start your free trial. And you can also head over to squarespace.com forward slash watch the image for 10% off your first purchase. Links will be down in the description. Now I've filmed so many music videos, so many music videos using a gimbal. And one thing that I always notice and one thing that I always hate about using a gimbal is the lack of precision. Gimbals are amazing if you're trying to run around fast and cover a lot of ground and film a subject or an artist going fast paced. But when you decide to slow the shot down and you want a precise shot and you want to keep the subject directly in the middle of the frame and you don't want any bouncing in the shot, gimbals are so hard to replicate this. They're so hard to do this and sliders aren't. It's almost like you really can't replicate the look of a slider with a gimbal. Like it's low key unmatched, honestly. So whenever I have those music videos that need to be slow tempo to match the tempo of the song, sliders will always win over a gimbal for me personally. If I need to get that smooth shot where I'm moving in slow and I need to be perfect and I need to be precise and I need to make sure the subject is in the middle of the frame, a slider is always gonna win after me. And that's one thing that I noticed over the past two months, like, yo, like, you really can't replicate this movement using a gimbal. It's so easy, it's so precise, it's so smooth. And the flywheel system on the slider just makes it so it's like, yo, you never have any bumps, everything's so smooth. You never have like that 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 slow stop or that bounce in the shot. That right there is why you use a slider or a dolly for a shot. Another thing that I've realized over the past two months with just using a slider is the footprint is so crazy. Like gimbals aren't big, but you need a big space to be able to utilize a gimbal in an effective way. Like you don't want to use a gimbal in a room where you can only move like two feet. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's really no need to, but with the slider, you can get into these small spaces and get smooth, precise movements and really smooth shots. Like if you only have a foot to move with a gimbal, it's very, very, very unlikely that you're going to get that one foot of movement smooth. You're going to be bouncing and you're going to be shaking and it's just not going to be as smooth as using something like a slider. So footprint, definitely a huge benefit of using a slider over a gimbal. And the last and one thing that I didn't even really realize until I started using a slider is the amount of work that you have to output using it is so much less than using a gimbal. Anybody out there who's used a gimbal, you know using a gimbal is tiring. 
it hurts your back. There's so much effort that you have to output using the gimbal, you sweat. It's just so many things like that. But with a slider, like you don't, you really don't use any effort at all, honestly. I remember specifically, I was shooting this one shot for this redhead music video at a hotel and I wanted to get the down low angle shooting in on the slider. And I was literally sitting on the ground with my back up against the wall, just moving the slider with my hand. And like to think, I just sat there and thought like, man, if I had to get this shot on the gimbal, I would be hurting right now. Anybody who's ever used the gimbal, you know, trying to get that down low angle where you have to bend over your back and like, oh my God, it's such a freaking backache and a headache, man. So like the amount of work that you have to output using a slider versus a gimbal, it's like, come on, yo. It's, it's sliders literally save your back. So to sum this up, sliders aren't dead, but neither are gimbals. It's certain things while I was using a slider over the past two months that I realized like, dang, I really wish I had a gimbal for like traveling a large distance. You have a certain length that you can go and then after that it's just, you know, you can't go anymore. Another thing that you have to get really creative with when using a slider as well is getting your wide shots because if you go too wide, you'll see the slider in the shots and with the gimbal, you obviously don't have to worry about that. So, I mean, every tool has its job, you know, it's more so me saying that it's certain things that a gimbal can't do. So you might have to get in two sliders. You might have to think about other ways that you can achieve similar shots using other methods or other tools that would get that shot better if that makes sense. Yes, you can slowly move in using a gimbal, but most of the time it's gonna be bouncy and not as smooth as you need it to be. Whereas you can just, you know, use a slider or a dolly. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, man. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Use creativity, use other tools to get different sorts of shots for your projects. Honestly, one thing that I would love for you guys to let me know down in the comments is how many of you guys have never used a slider or a dolly for your projects? And if so, why? Like, I honestly just wanna know. And if you haven't, I encourage you, I highly encourage you to get out and try a slider or a dolly for your projects. It'll literally transform the way you think about the way you're filming. And it's just like life-changing. Like, I can remember the first time I got on an actual dolly and had somebody push me for a shot. Like, it's, it's crazy, man. But um, yeah, let me know that down in the comments. Drop this video a like if you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you're new here, subscribe. Uh, that's pretty much it, man. Peace out, guys.